Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today for Simon Says Stamp with a Polychromos on blue card stock card for you. We're going to have a little blue Christmas here with the Stamp Timber Clearly Besotted Limited Edition Exclusive Stamp Set called Celebrate the Season. This beautiful stamp set has this wreath and then accents, an individual flower if you wanted to do some layering or add the bow, which I'm going to add the bow to my card, and then some fantastic sentiments. Now I'm going to start by prepping my cardstock with a powder tool. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Soft Navy cardstock, and I really want to make sure I have a clean, stamped, and embossed outline to color in. And so I want to start with the bow, as that's going to slightly overlap the wreath. I'm not going to do traditional masking in the sense of cutting out and fussy cutting a mask or anything like that. Instead, I am going to kind of just use some post-it tape to mask off just the tips of the bows there a little bit and then stamp my wreath where that overlaps. So kind of cheating, I guess, a bit in not creating a complete mask. If I don't have to, I generally won't. Next, we're going to take that wreath image, and I am using a Misty to do all my stamping. Because I had not used these stamps before, I really felt like I needed to stamp them a couple times. I wanted to make sure I got a really good stamped impression. And then you can see I missed a couple little spots there right next to the bow, so I'm just going to kind of maneuver my post-it tape around a bit. And then we can sprinkle on the antique gold embossing powder on this part of the image as well. I really love the antique gold on the soft navy cardstock for a elegant type of look. You could use silver or white, whatever color you prefer. Now there were a couple of spots that I need to remove embossing powder from. So I'm taking a dry paintbrush and I am simply wiping away the embossing powder from where it might be overlapping the bow. I think it's sticking to a little bit of residue left over from the post-it tape, but I'm just kind of taking my time, cleaning that up, tapping off that excess, wiping it all away. Prepping your cardstock for coloring while maybe a little bit time consuming is well worth the effort to end up with a beautiful embossed result. So now we can heat set that antique gold embossing powder. So, so, so pretty. I love this. And then I'm going to take a nice dry rag once the embossing powder has cooled. Be sure that it's cooled all the way. And we're going to wipe away all of that powder residue so that we have a perfect surface for coloring. Look how pretty that is. Once you get rid of that chalky look in the background, it looks fantastic. Next, I'm going to color in the bow with a white colored pencil. I prepped all of my images with white underneath and then I'm going to add color on top. That really just kind of helps the color pop really well. However, polychromos are awesome in that you can color on dark cardstock with them and it's going to show up. Look at these blues. So this is a very tone on tone card. We did start with a soft navy background and then we're going to add blue florals, a blue bow, then green leaves and brown pine cones. So that's going to be a little bit addition of color there, but everything is in shades of blue. I am really into some non-traditional kind of holiday colors I think this season and I really thought this was soft and elegant and so so pretty. Another thing I like to have on hand when I am coloring with polychromos or other colored pencils is a dry paintbrush to wipe away any paper or pardon me pencil uh, shavings or maybe not even shavings, just kind of that excess that you get when you're coloring over images a lot. If you wipe it away with your hand, it can smear. And so I will often just use a nice dry paintbrush to wipe that away. 
I'm going to add a white layer then to all of the leaves. And then just go in with some greens and add in that depth and dimension. If I blend out a little too much, I can always go back in with my darker color and add that in. I did try to do all of the greens at once, and then I kind of ended up doing one half of the wreath and then the other. But you can definitely do it however you prefer. And again, the green shows up beautifully on the soft navy background. I have sped up the coloring quite a bit to save some time. This card took an hour and 15 minutes to create. I can't always give you the exact specifics, uh, but I set a timer. I was curious, and so I already kind of knew what I was going to do. So I did have the idea pre prior to starting my card, but I did set a timer, and that way I was really well aware of exactly how long this card took. I know there's always quite a few questions um, every, I guess, once in a while uh, come up. How long does it take you to create a card? And so I thought it would be fun to share that today. The coloring definitely takes a little bit of time, but well worth the effort. I'm really, really loving my colored pencils again. So we about have our leaves here. And once we have those, we are going to start on the left side of our wreath with the poinsettia and then the other flower, which might be another poinsettia just tipped in a different direction. I don't really know, but we're going to lay down the layer of white. And I'm not using a super heavy hand. It's really kind of a light hand. You can see, you can kind of see through it. It's not super smooth coloring. And then we can go in with our darkest blue color, the cobalt turquoise and the cobalt green, and blend that out. These are the exact same colors that I used for the bow. So four of the flowers in the wreath will have those exact same colors. I feel like it balances it out nice. We have two on each side and then down in the middle in the center. And then our three flowers on each side, so six total, the smaller flowers, those are all going to be colored in a little bit lighter shade, where I ended up really loving it. I kind of saved those for last, well, not super last, I guess, but I did this these flowers first because I knew what I wanted to do there, and I knew that I wanted to do something different, a different color combination with those smaller flowers, but I wasn't exactly sure what because I wanted them to stand out. I want these darker blue flowers to stand out, and I was afraid if I used the same colors, it would all blend together way too much, which it definitely would have. So I opted instead to use one shade of a blue marker and my white pencil for those smaller flowers, and it ended up really, really pretty. I like how it turned out a lot. We also have all of these little round sprigs little berries, those are all going to be in shades of blue as well. So here is coloring in those smaller flowers, that nice white base to start with. You can see that I already did the ones over on the left side of the card and how much lighter they are and they really help the darker flowers pop. And then we're just blending in a little light cobalt turquoise. And then we'll go back with the white and use a heavier hand to blend those two colors together. And that's what gives it that beautiful light blue color. So, so pretty. Wipe away any of those little flakes then with a dry paintbrush. Don't forget all of the little berries. I did give them a layer of white first and then just a single color over the top with one of my blue markers, or pardon me, pencils. And then I'll color in those other flowers on the other side as well, just like I did on the left side. We'll do a nice little white layer on our pine cones then. And then I've got two shades of brown. We'll just add in 
some little dark areas and then we're going to blend over the top of that completely with our lighter color. And these really look fantastic on that blue cardstock as well. So there is the coloring with polychromos over a dark blue cardstock. I absolutely love this look. Next, I'm going to take sentiments from that clearly besotted Celebrate the Season stamp set, and we are going to position those in the center of our wreath and do a little layered embossing. So we've embossed the outline for our wreath, and now we're going to stamp and emboss in the center of our design, and part of that will overlap what we've already uh, stamped, embossed, and colored, but this time we're going to emboss with white embossing powder so that it really pops off of this design and it's very easy and legible to read. So I'm using my Misty so I can stamp that Merry Christmas a couple times. There's a couple of options for scripty sentiments in the stamp set. We're going to sprinkle on our white embossing powder. I did stamp the two phrases separately so that I could get them as close together as possible. We're going to use our dry paintbrush to wipe away any little stray embossing flakes, we don't want any of those on our flowers, on our wreath, or anything like that. I did prep the cardstock again with a powder tool, so that's that powdery look that we have in the center. We'll wipe that all away here in a little bit. We'll heat emboss with white. And then we're going to stamp and emboss our sentiment underneath the Merry Christmas. And that really rounds it out so nicely. I love the mixed mix of a scripty sentiment and then more of a typeface kind of one. So our sentiment will read, Merry Christmas from our home to yours. And I apologize for my head in the way I wanted to make sure it was lined up, and I had to get right over the top of it, apparently. Again, we'll sprinkle on our white embossing powder, wipe away any flakes with a dry paintbrush, and then heat emboss. And that white on the dark with all of the beautiful blue coloring really is going to show up. I trimmed my background down. I had started with a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. I trimmed it to four inches by five and a quarter. So there's going to be a white border all the way around when I adhere it to a white top fold card base. That's going to tie the white embossing together really nicely. We're going to go around the edges now and soften the look of our cardstock with some tumbled glass distress oxide ink. Then we're going to take faded jeans and go over the top of that just around the edges to deepen and darken just a tiny little bit. I'm going to take a dry rag and buff away any excess ink that might be on top of our stamped and colored wreath. So pretty. And then we're going to adhere this to our white top fold card base. And here is where the white embossing is going to tie in really nicely to the border all the way around our card. And finally, we are going to finish by applying a scattering of Nouveau Crystal Drops in navy blue, Wedgwood blue, and pale gold. I was really careful with the colors I chose to add to my card here as I wanted to make sure that they completely coordinated. Um, Normally, I tend to gravitate towards white, and I even pulled the white ones out, but I'm glad I didn't use them here. I think the pale gold ties into the gold embossing. The Wedgwood blue and navy blue 
both really pick up the blue colors of our card and round out this design so, so nicely. And we're going to just continue to add some little drops of these all over our background until we have just the look we're going for. And that is going to finish up this holiday card. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Christmas card featuring coloring with polychromos on a blue cardstock using the Stamp Timber Clearly Besotted Celebrate the Season stamp set. Please be sure to visit the Simon Says Stamp blog for more information. Thanks so much for joining me today, and we'll catch you next time.